Hey guys, Joe back once again with some OCR FSMQ and today we are talking about definite integral. So the learn objective is to learn how to use integration to find the area under a curve. Now that's not the only thing to do with definite integral. Sometimes you are just expected to find the number value but today all we're going to be talking about is area because the same sort of concepts can be um, applied because it's exactly the same work except you put unit squared on at the end. Um, of area ones but let's get into it so last lesson we talked about integration adding one to the power dividing by the new new, new power and um, but remember that see that we were adding well sometimes you asked to work it out what that fella is we're talking about that in the last lesson as it says there and I forgot to get my pen out again so there you go there's the pen but sometimes we have these things called limits on integrals which are little numbers on uh, the integral sign the big curly s and it looks like this so there you go this is just a generic um, a definite integral between 2 and minus 2 um, of x cubed with respect to dx uh, the number uh, th sorry the bigger number will always be on the top at this level anyway um, once you get to a2 maths you talk about um, different limits, different variables, changing the variables, stuff like that. Um, but it's used to find the area underneath a curve usually. Um, but you, you can just be asked for the number value. What we're doing uh, in reality is putting two big goal posts at 2 and minus 2 and shading the area in between. So if we have a little generic x cubed graph there, put up the goal posts at minus 2 and 2 and just shading in the, the area underneath. Uh, well, between the curve and the x-axis. Now then, to integrate a piece of algebra between limits, we do this. The integral between b and a is f uh, of f dash of x with respect to dx equals uh, square brackets f of x between b and a, which equals f of b minus f of a. So it might just be a little bit much to get your head around that, but it will come during examples. So there's your limits of a b and a. Uh, that just means integrating with respect to x. Add 1 to the power dividing by the new power. But the answer is to integrate and then put the b and a through and take them off each other. Easy peasy, you might think, uh, once you put it that way. But here's the example. Evaluate of, uh, the integral of x squared minus 2x with respect to dx between 4 and 2. So think about the graph, which is that, and that took me ages to draw. <laughs> Put up a goalpost, which is a 2 and 4, like that. It's slightly offline, but never mind. And then shade the area in between. You get the idea. Between 2 and 4, goalposts, shading the area underneath. That's what area that we want, or the number that we want, depending on how you want to look at it. So the answer, integrate it first. Add 1 to the power divided by the new power, so you end up with x cubed over 3 minus 2x squared over 2. But remember that the 2s will cancel and it'll just become a 1. And that's between a 4 and 2, remember. So then put with 4 through and with 2 through and subtract, like that. And I'll let you quickly work that out in your head and it'll end up being six and two-thirds. I would strongly advise to keep it in mixed fractions form uh, or just a top-heavy fraction. You don't really want to be dealing with recurring decimals and things when you get to this level of maths. But if it's area, we need some units, so we call that six and two-thirds units squared. But if you give them centimeters, obviously centimeters squared. But um, if it literally just says that and mentions nothing about area, you will just write this answer here, the 6 and 2 thirds. But I don't think it would harm writing the unit squared. It might make you look a little bit clumsy, but I think the examiner would still give you the marks for getting to that answer there. So, let's talk about that uh, question before, which was that. And that seems easy enough. Let's think about that graph. Well, well hold on, we'll integrate it first. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. Put with 2 and minus 2 through and subtract. And we get that, which is 0. Now, that's a perfectly acceptable answer if they're just asking for that. But if they're asking for area, you need to think, hmm, 
really no area but it's it's an x cube graph and if we looked at the the the, the graph before um well hold on let's have a look at the, the the graph again there is area shaded there but what do you notice about the areas the symmetrical now one is above the axis and one is below so they're actually cancelling each other out which is very annoying uh, when you're doing an area so you need to be very careful and be very aware of the graph that you're drawing and see if it dips underneath then you have to put up more goal posts unfortunately so we'll have to do it one stage at a time and stick an artificial goal post where the curve crosses the axis and this time it just happens to be through the origin right here um, but it's not always that so just be wary but there's what artificial goal post and now we have two stories and, uh, and yeah we'll go with it so split the integrals like that so you have one between two and zero and one between zero and minus two same as before integrate first add one to the power divide by the new power put your two and zero through and subtract and you get four and similarly you get that put your zero and minus two through you get that which is minus four and then subtract your answers and you'll get eight and remember if it's if this is area that we're talking about the definite integral is zero but if it, if we're talking about area it's going to be eight units squared so that is a lot to take in in this lesson but try and get your head around it it is um it isn't easy but it is all about practice at the end of the day and most of the time i think you'll just be asked for the definite integral and you wouldn't be given anything as nasty as that but you might be given it um you know later on in the paper question 12 or 13 and it could turn into an area between curves question which is what we're going to be talking about next lesson but yeah i hope you guys have found this helpful please leave a like if you did and uh, leave your comments down below if there's a mistake in the powerpoint or if if um you know you have any feedback uh, that you want to tell us and yeah I'll see you guys for the area between two curves in a couple of days time so see you later hope you're having a nice day